In this series of videos, we're going to be looking at vectors, and uh, we're going to be going into definitions and what they are, what they aren't, um, as well as why we need them, and of course a whole bunch of other things later on. But I think it's important maybe to just get a quick little start here, why we even need them. I mean, maybe I try to draw two cars, and I want to draw them traveling at 50 kilometers per hour. Now, I'm a really lousy artist, so I'm not going to try to draw a car itself, but maybe I could try to draw some sort of, you know, box, let's say. So this right here, maybe this is a car here. And maybe I try to draw my car, and then maybe I draw another car. Now, a first car, let's say I have it, you know, how can I, how can I represent this speed here, this 50 kilometers per hour? What a lot of people do is they decide, oh, maybe I'll draw an arrow, and that's maybe okay. So maybe I'll draw an arrow like this, and I'll label it 50 kilometers per hour kilometers per hour there we go and maybe then this other one is also going 50 kilometers per hour now this could represent them and that's great but what if i want to have them going in different directions you know what if what if they're not both following the same ways what if one's going to the right and one's going up well do you see how it would be pretty easy if i just drew another arrow instead going upwards and instead forget about the cars let's just label these as 50. so maybe i have one going to the right it's 50 one going up it's 50. i hope you can see that this is actually very useful just drawing an arrow and i want you to think about what if i was to draw it as a hundred instead of 50. you know so most people know already what to do right without even giving any formal instruction on vectors you know if you're told that this arrow represents a speed of 50 kilometers per hour well then what would you do if you had something that was a hundred well you'd probably draw it twice as long and so you already have some sort of idea then what we should do with vectors okay i think this is already sort of a good introduction here so why we need them now um what is a definition of a vector it's a little bit what i've just drawn here okay so um we could say that a vector is something that has a, let's see, magnitude. We're going to call it magnitude. That's the formal name. Um, and it has a direction. This is really important here. So it's something that has a magnitude and a direction. Now, what do I mean by magnitude? I mean a length. So for example, back here, those arrows that I had, this is the length of this arrow is 50 units long. <clears throat> Keep in mind, these can be speeds, they can be distances, they can be forces, they can be whatever quantity you feel like measuring. They don't have to be actual meters. They can be kilometers per hour, that's fine. So do you see how the length of this thing right here, and then this one here, it's a longer arrow to represent more of that quantity. So here what we mean is, that is the magnitude. The magnitude is the actual quantity that we're measuring, and that's the length. And the direction, that's because it's an arrow. So the direction, that's the direction that the arrow points. Okay, so that's really important here, is the direction of an arrow. That's where it's pointing to. Um, that's because back here, see, we could have arrows pointing any which way we want, right? We can have arrows pointing that way, or we can have them this way, or that way. It doesn't matter at all. You can point whichever direction you feel like. That's the beauty of vectors. Now, what I liked is that uh, a few years ago with my own students in my class, I asked them during, um, it was near Valentine's Day, and I always thought that, you know, physics gets no love, and neither does math. You know, so math and physics, they don't really get much love in this world. Uh, and I think they should. So I told my students, I want you to do anything creative, either write a poem or a song or whatever, but just use physics or math words in them. And one of my students, I still remember this, she wrote this, was a beginning of a poem. She said, roses are red, violets are blue, vectors have direction and magnitude too. So you see, there's a definition right there. Vectors have direction and magnitude. So what a vector is? It's just an arrow. There you go. And this arrow has a length. You can measure that length of the arrow. And it has a direction that it's pointing. That's it. Vectors are just arrows. You might think, okay, well, those are pretty stupid. Why would I use those? Well, it turns out we can use them for all sorts of things. So we can use vectors in everyday life. I mean, maybe you want to look at, you know, how far you are from home. So maybe you start off from home and, I don't know, maybe you go off in this direction. Oops, maybe I should actually draw it as an actual arrow. I think I can get this little thingy here to give me arrows here. Just a second, bear with me. Maybe I'll change the color. All right, so let's say I go for a little walk. I walk this way, and after that, then I walk uh, that way. Now, my question might be, 
Okay, so how far have I walked? That's easy to figure out. I'll walk this far plus this far, whatever those distances are. But maybe I want to know how far away I am from home. So maybe then I need to know, well, what's the distance from here to here? And do you see how if you added up this arrow and this arrow, you could figure out pretty easily, hopefully, that, oh, well, I'm this distance from home. That right there might be the distance that I'm looking for here. So maybe that's what I want here. We can actually call that a displacement. It's often used with little letter S. Um, we might do it with navigation. So what if you're flying in your airplane? So here's my little plane here. Whoops, I can't quite see it. So there's a little airplane. And maybe in my airplane I'm flying uh, straight north, let's just say. So let's say I'm going north here in my airplane. But at the same time, there's some winds. So I'm trying to aim myself straight north, but then there's some sort of wind that's hitting me. Maybe the wind is going to the right, let's say. So now I have a wind that's going to the right. So maybe the wind is like this. Well, then what will happen to me? Then I'm trying to fly this way, but the wind is pushing me to the right. What happens to me? Well, it's really easy. If you can add up vectors, you can say, oh, I'm going to end up flying that way. That'll be my actual path over the ground. So vectors are useful that way to add up these things here. And maybe I want to do 3D projectile motion, or 2D, sorry, projectile motion. What do I mean by that? This is like... Um, it could be anything really. This could be like me, let's say there's a building here, and let's say for some reason I'm shot off of a building at some sort of angle here. So let's say this is me here. And maybe I want to know what kind of path I'm going to take. Well, if you know about physics, you know that I'm going to take a curved path like this. It's going to be a parabola, and I'm going to land somewhere down here. But in order to figure out what my maximum height will be, what's my time in flight, how hard am I going to hit the ground, how long will it take me, all this stuff hinges upon me knowing what's my initial speed here and what's my angle. So it turns out that angle is important. And that means then that what I would need to do is figure out what's this piece and what's this piece. I might need to make a little triangle out of it here. So it turns out vectors are useful there too. We even have uh, in rock climbing. I really enjoy climbing, so this is uh, something that I like. And I like to use examples from things that I've done at least before, just because it makes more sense to me. So let's say uh, that you're up climbing here. And I'm going to try to draw this right here. So you've got your climber here, and then you've got someone on the ground, ideally. Someone on the ground. Whoops. I better actually draw a line. Maybe that's nicer. I'll draw a proper line here. Whoops. Maybe I should make it a different color. There we go, and make a blue one here. So I'm going to try to draw a blue line, there we go, going up to some sort of anchor here, and then some sort of uh, line there. Which means if this person right here falls, their force is going to be you know, given by this rope, and then this rope goes down to me. And that means that if I'm the one sitting on the ground here, or laying, or standing, I guess, hopefully, I'm standing and paying attention, I've got the rope right here attached to me, um, this explains actually why when this person falls, I get a massive wedgie. In other words, I get lifted straight up. And that's because, um, we'll learn later on how to do this with vectors, I can actually take a vector and break it up into what are called components. So I can say, oh, this vector has a piece of it going to the right and a piece of it going straight up. See, I didn't do it right, so I just, I'll just drag this over. See, it's easy. I'll just drag this over and I'll take this one here and stretch it out a little bit. There we go. So what this means then is that if I can just figure out, you know, this piece right here, turns out that piece tells me why I'm going to fly forward if this person falls. And this piece right here, notice this piece right here is really long. That explains why I'm going to have an upwards force that's going to drag me sort of off the ground or give me a massive wedgie. So that's also really important. Not the wedgies themselves, but what it is that this stuff is actually useful for. So there are lots of uses in everyday life for vectors. Um, even another one could be, what if you're traveling along, um, let's say along a river here. There's a river, maybe the current of the river goes this way, let's say. And you want to go swimming, and you try to go swimming this way, let's say. Well, are you actually going to end up over here? You know, are you going to end up following that path straight across the river? No, you're going to end up going down the river. And how do you know that? Because the river flows that way. So we can draw an arrow to represent the river's flow, an arrow to represent where you're trying to go, and we could put those arrows together in order to figure out, hey, look at that, I'm actually going to go that way. Although I drew it as a curve, it's not supposed to be a curve, it's supposed to be a straight line. We could figure out then where you'll end up. Vectors are hugely important. 
In fact, there's a company in the U.S., I think, uh, well, Kellogg's, they make this uh, cereal called Vector Cereal. And I remember when I was in university and taking exams on, you know, vectors and things like this, you know, for good luck, I'd always eat Vector Cereal in the morning. I don't even...